This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Every month, it seems like we break a new record at our airport. Just last month after the Super Bowl, Harry Reid International broke the single day for most travelers passing through airport security. But how many of you have actually spent time exploring the airport? Today on CityCast Las Vegas, CityCast newsletter editor Rob Catchell Reese brings us his insider tips for what makes our airport so unique and all the special nooks and crannies inside. It's Tuesday, March 19th. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Rob, between the two of us, we've probably been to Harry Reid International hundreds of times. Easy. So for you, what was the most surprising thing learned while researching the guide to the airport you did for Thrillist? I think the most surprising thing is that the airport actually has its own fitness center. And <laughs> okay. And it's almost like a fitness speakeasy. It's by the baggage claim in uh, Terminal 1. But you wouldn't really know it's there until, I mean, there's a sign there, but you're not really looking for that. I've never seen that sign. Exactly. And how many times have you flown into the airport? Yeah, exactly. So if you look for the sign, it's there. And then there's like this industrial elevator that takes you down to the zero level fitness center. And it's named after the zero level because it's below the first floor. Or the famous weightlifter zero level. Uh, Of course, absolutely. Bad jokes. (laughs) I'm going to play now, Rob. Uh, Let's roll with it. Um, (laughs) But um, it's it's not just like a few things. It's like a full service fitness facility that's been there for something like 20 years. You've got heavy weights. You've got machines. You can roll out your mats in a little studio and do yoga and stretch out. There's a whole upper deck of cardio machines with TVs there. And you can just pick your workout, pay a charge, and um, get get some reps in while uh, your flight's delayed, or before a flight, or after a flight. I am just assuming that the first rule of zero level is that you're not allowed to talk about zero level, because I have <laughs> never heard of this. I mean, I know well, zero level, right? That's like where the tour buses are, or charter buses, or something like that, but I've never had occasion to go anywhere near there. Well, I think a lot of it is geared towards employees, but... Here's the thing. Any traveler can use it. Say you're in between flights. The only downside is you're outside of TSA. So you'd have to leave that and then do the TSA line back in. But you can get your workout in. You could take a shower, which for some people, that's worth the price alone. And yes, get this. I would pay ha- for some people hanging out in the airport. To <laughs> I don't know if that. you could pay for somebody else to take a shower, but you could try. <laughs> right. um, but also, they have sleep rooms. Wait. Sleep rooms. Stop there. In the gym or near the gym? They are part of the gym. So you rent a room and you can rent it for, I think it's a minimum of two hours. I mean, people can't see my my jaw is slack open right now. Yeah, I, I don't blame I've you. I've been spending so much time curled up in those very uncomfortable, like stationary next to somebody who really doesn't want me to curl up. And you're telling me I could have on occasion when necessary, gone and rented a room at at Harry Reid International? Exactly. And I actually booked one in the name of research. Okay. And took a little nap in there. And there's some rules there. Like, it's one person per room. So don't get any funny business. You can't bring somebody else. You can't... There's nothing but funny business in my head, but... You know, try to cross something off a Vegas Vegas bucket list while while you're renting the sleep room. The zero-level club, as they say. For... But for some people, this could be like what they really need to uh, 
carry them over while traveling to and from Las Vegas. Rob, was it roomy in there? I mean, I'm envisioning like something very efficient, like in a Japanese airport where it's essentially a, <laughs> like a drawer. It's a little bigger than a rollout drawer. Actually, what it's almost like is it's almost like a massage room, like a similar size. It's not super comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable. Like if you were really tired and you needed some sleep, I, I, I think it's worth every penny. And what's the the price on that? So a traveler day pass for the fitness center is twenty five dollars, mm-hmm. and then uh, you could book the sleep room, which begins at forty dollars for two hours. All right. Well, if somebody wanted to not sleep over but get to the airport a few hours early and just hang out, uh, or worse, you know, their flight got delayed, where should they go and what should they do? Well, I describe the Harry Reid Airport as an airport that's always looking out for you. Whatever you kind of need, what you want, it's there. I believe it's one of only six airports left in the country that allow smoking indoors. I don't like that, but some people might. Um, You can uh, drink. There's some restaurants and stands that will give you booze uh, kind of on the spot to go. And And that's 24-7 for some of those places? I believe so, although not all of them. Right. And uh, what I really like when it comes to booze is Liquor Library. Liquor, um, library. liquor library is in the baggage claim. I mean, this baggage claim is the most happening place in Vegas. Uh, you know, here's the thing is I rarely will check a bag. I'll do what I can to have carry on so I could just like bust right through there and get to my ride. Yeah. Uh, I need to slow roll. All right. Liquor Library. Tell me, Rob, what's that? What I love about Liquor Library, it's a full service liquor store and they got like all the big brands, you know, some fun stuff like like local whiskey, like uh, Frey Ranch or uh, Smoke Wagon is even in there. Oh, wow. So if you kind of need our like favorites, Rob, let's just be real about that. We love those. We love those brands. We do. Um, you, you, you on the former, me on the latter. Uh, but yeah, definitely. OK, yeah. so that's cool. And, and I think they actually advertise themselves as the only liquor store in a baggage claim that's not <laughs> duty free. As if that's a perk. <laughs> yeah, right. But but I guess they're setting some kind of record. But uh, And the prices are a little high. What's the vibe in there? It's like a full, you know, liquor store. And they've got like a little refrigerated section for like, you know, booze to go kind of thing. Which is, this is kind of for people who are landing and are starting on their Vegas vacation ASAP. Like they're not yeah. wasting any time. Yeah. But what I like about it is that they give out free samples on a pretty regular basis. To the point that if you go on their website, they actually list the schedule for the entire week of what they'll be handing out at Liquor Library. And I don't know any other airport in the U.S. where you're getting free booze. All right. We're going to link that in our show notes. Um, That is for sure. It's a valuable resource for sure. Yeah, definitely. The Um, perk that I found is if I'm in the baggage claim waiting for, say, my parents to arrive and pick up their luggage. Yeah. Well, I can just go get a shot while I'm waiting. (laughs) <laughs> like a library is, is right there by the escalator for most people's parents. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, that is such a great tip. Um, okay, and now I have to hit the the inevitable one. I mean, because everybody talks about it. There's not a, a comic who does Vegas jokes that doesn't mention it. But you know, we've got those slot machines all over the place. Rob, what is it? What's the allure? Can people wait? Why? Why do slot machines in an airport? Um, Some people just want to get their fix as soon as possible, or they want to kill some time while they're waiting to depart. Harry Reid is one of only two airports in the entire country that has slot machines. The only other one is the Reno Tahoe Airport, which is a lot smaller, um, but they're both in Nevada. And uh, Harry Reid has more than a thousand slot machines on property. That's what I was going to ask. They're real slot machines. They're just like what you'd see at your average casino on the strip. And people win real money. Uh, And lose real money, too. Let us make that very, very clear. Uh, It's probably Um, very lucrative. Is is it a bunch of different people who own those slot machines, or is it one? Or what did you learn? So the uh, slot machines at the airport are operated by a company called Airport Slot Concession, which is run by Michael Gahn. Ah, A very familiar name. (laughs) <laughs> Might recognize that name. He's the son of Jackie Gon, a very uh, famous casino magnet in uh, town who's uh, he- kind of helped shape the character and uh, economy of this city. But uh, yeah, not to mention the owner of the South Point Hotel, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, 
how these things tend to go old Vegas style is it's a family business. So sometimes these yeah. things happen. Well, I wonder how he got that. Um, <laughs> honestly, I wonder, but it's rhetorical. It's rhetorical. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Shipping can make or break a sale. So optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. All right, let's switch gears uh, into food. Uh, You're a foodie, Rob. Uh, Is there good food at our airport? Well, you know... (laughs) I love the pause. Yeah. Um, You know what I like best about the Vegas airport is it doesn't have those annoying digital ordering tablets that so many other airports have in the middle of every table. I just think that's the worst thing. And as long as Vegas keeps that out, I'm happy. But um, there's a lot of um, options, obviously. I think sometimes Vegas can do better than it does. But um, you got things like Metro Pizza, which is a local favorite. Yeah. So you can't go wrong with that. And um, Las Vegas Airport is the only place where you can find Moe's Southwest Grill anywhere in Las Vegas. Huh. There's only one location left, and it's at the airport. And you'd have to go through TSA, so this wouldn't be like a casual... You would have to go through the TSA. You can't go mm. to the airport just to hang out and... Um, at at Moe's. Have a little Moe's. But it's kind of similar to Ch- Chipotle. It's like, you know, Bill Joan Burrito Bowl Got kind it. of thing. Any other standouts in the in the food scene? In the, you know The what? food scene at the multiple terminals? There's a few fun um, vending machines, including one for uh, Sprinkles Cupcakes, which used to be at the link, but it closed. So now... The only place you can get it now is at the airport. And last I heard, they drive them up from Los Angeles every day. So these are like fresh cupcakes that they stock in the vending machines. That's last I heard. If it's changed since then, I'm not sure. But uh, one of the most exciting openings, you know, as far as excitement at the airport goes, is um, not too long ago, they opened up a coffee bar called Espresso Urbano by uh, the people behind Samba Latte, which is oh, a local coffee me. shop. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I like Samba Latte very much, and I'm often in that interminal line uh, for Starbucks to get my fix before I get on the uh, on the plane. So I'm wh- which terminal is that in? That's in T3, and that is oh, okay. probably the newest thing in T3. So it just opened. I believe it's by the baggage claim. And uh, T3 also has um, a steakhouse. It has a... Uh, Las Vegas Chop House and Brewery. But uh, what I find interesting about that is you can't have like steak knives in the airport because after you go through TSA, you can't take that on the plane with you. Yeah, that's totally So makes um, sense. your steak, you might have to uh, use a plastic uh, fork and knife for that. But hey, it's still a steak in the airport. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's so many food courty places uh, that probably are very familiar to people. Uh, but even like Shake Shack is over there in Terminal One. Uh, I saw. So I guess if you're a Shake Shack fan, uh, you got a you got a place there too. Well, you know, if you're in um, if you're in the D concourse, that's like pizza heaven over there because you got Metro Pizza, you got Sammy's Wood Fired Pizza, and then you got Wolfgang Puck Express, which serves pizza. Oh, so okay. you pretty much have the pizza spectrum to choose from, all within a few uh, steps from each other. Any neat retail over there uh, to check out? I've noticed that some airports are really kind of stepping up the high-end retail and not just the old school souvenir shops or the, you know, the the pulp fiction romance novel places. You mean aside from the Lego vending machine? Oh, there's a Lego vending machine? 
Rob, but you need to give me a list of all the vending machines between cupcakes and Legos. Uh, and I guess also there's like electronics ones and stuff like that. I, I could be in heaven. I uh, know. I don't think there's anything you can't get from a vending machine in Las Vegas. Uh, but aside from that, there's a Raider Image location. Um, actually, I think there's two of them. So if you want to get some official Raider swag, if you forgot to pick some up at Allegiant Stadium, yeah. you can pick some up and it's officially licensed and it could be the last thing you get while on the way out of Las Vegas. Sure. Uh, at least someone's winning with Raiders gear. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us a little history of Harry Reid International, which, of course, started out as a little airstrip in the desert. Uh, how did our little outpost grow into such a, you know, high end, really metropolitan airport? Yeah. I mean, you might kind of assume that the airport was there first and the city kind of grew around it, but it wasn't quite like that. Um, the first plane arrived in Las Vegas um, on some dirt lot back in 1920. And then eventually the first thing that came close to resembling an airport was something called Anderson Field. And I believe that evolved into Rockwell Field. At some point, it's a little fuzzy with the history here, but what we know now as Nellis Air Force Base, which was known as the Las Vegas Army Airfield, Mm -hmm. actually had the unique situation of having both commercial and military aircraft taking off and landing at the same place at the same point in time. Oh, that could be unsettling, but okay. (laughs) I mean, sure, small town. Yeah, but what really developed um, with aviation in Vegas was mail, because you had mail service doing flying before most other people were, at least on a widespread basis. But this is like old school, back when, you know, planes were made out of, you know, a frame and cloth and, you know, taking five hours to get from here to Salt Lake City and bumpy air travel and all that. But obviously, as tourism grew, what really set things wide open was the deregulation of the airline industry in the 70s, which caused uh, prices to drop, more airlines. And then you had people coming to Vegas and the resorts here really promoting it. Yeah, no, those junkets were real in the 70s and 80s. I remember uh, we used to get visitors to my family, you know, friends from back in Chicago where my my parents were from, on the steady who came here on these junkets. Uh, and it would always be these trips out to the airport to go grab them. And, you know, they would stay in these different hotels, mostly like the Flamingo or the Tropicana or, you know, Caesars Palace, et cetera. Um, and it was all taken care of. But they had to have that great airport to be able to do that. Yeah, and that's really what helped uh, Vegas boom. Um, There was a guy named George Crockett who was a flight instructor from the Midwest, and he founded Alamo Airport in 1942. And that really helped kind of its presence there, helped like the junket business evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually that evolved into McCarran International Airport, which eventually became Harry Reid International Airport. And it has only grown since then. Yeah, and we're we're going to gloss over that because that's a whole nother uh, conversation about uh, why a lot of people ultimately won the day to get McCarran's name, even though he was very instrumental in securing a lot of the aviation stuff that occurred here in the Valley off of the airport naming uh, instead for Harry Reid, who, of course, was uh, the highest ranking official ever to come out of Las Vegas area, Searchlight specifically, uh, who rose to become Senate Majority Leader, which is kind of an amazing story in and of itself. And I believe his support of the aviation uh, industry was one of the things that helped uh, inspire the name change. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I believe that just happened in December of 2021. And a lot of people still getting used to not calling it the former name. Yeah. And I think they finally got all the signage replaced. There was a few uh, holdouts or there are a few holdouts here and there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, here's the funny thing. Uh, For an airport that's full of quirks, Harry Reid International has Terminal 1, it has Terminal 3, Yep, but no Terminal 2. That still screws me up when I go pick up someone at non-Terminal 1, and I'm like, is there a Terminal 2 that I'm missing out on? What's that about? (laughs) So Terminal 2 was demolished, and there was sort of a mindset that I guess they could always rebuild on part of it or something. Yeah. But it sounds like that wouldn't really make sense anyway. All right. Well, let let me ask you this, because I think talking about all these amenities at our very big, very modern airport, 
Rob, you're the Tom Hanks character in, in the movie The Terminal, and you have to live in the airport. I think his character lived there for nine months. So w- where are you going to spend most of your time? Um, I'm probably going to spend it in the Budweiser Lounge. Oh. Which is... I love um, that you saved a secret one for me. So what's the Budweiser <laughs> Lounge? You know, it's funny. Um, so when I was researching uh, some of my... Uh, my airport knowledge. I went and hung out in the Budweiser uh, lounge just to get a a good uh, traditional, you know, airport old fashioned, you know, the little spray of club soda from the gun, um, a little bit of orange and uh, bright red cherry juice from uh, the garnish tray. And, um, you know, I ran into a bartender there who used to work on the other side at one of the lounges that was adjacent to um, one of the little mini uh, slot machine rooms. And he told me, and this is an exact quote, um, when he went home at night, he could smell smoke in his underwear. (laughs) That's how bad it was. That's how bad the smoking was. So even though the Budweiser Lounge in uh, Terminal 1, before you go through TSA, even though it's a smoking lounge, you're only allowed to smoke on one side it's not too bad. This bartender told me it's a million times better than in the uh, slot machine lounge she was in before. Oh, I bet. For a lot of reasons. And you know what? And I mean, there's some sadness in those um, slot areas sometimes. Yeah. So, um, you know what? Sometimes I think there's just a little um, charm and joy in a traditional airport old-fashioned. Rob, thank you so much for joining us here on CityCast Las Vegas with all the airport secrets. You got it, man. Thanks for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, hey, go tell a friend, tell two. Uh, you can also rate this show on pretty much any of the platforms and leave us a review there too. We read them all. Don't forget to subscribe to our amazing morning newsletter that Rob edits. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Till then, stay lucky. if Spirit Airlines runs it, like it's extra for a pillow, it's extra for a blanket, you have to pay for every Z that comes no, out of your included. mouth in a little bubble, and there are ads on the ceiling that you can't turn off. <laughs>